Hi everybody, it is Sunday, finally. I am here to share how the end of week two went as a UPS PVD and my top five items for making sure you're being efficient and your route is optimal as a PVD. And it is Mimosa Sunday. Something we have every Sunday here at our household. Um, I meant to actually film this yesterday, but I was really tired when I got home. I did work Saturday, so I worked six days last week. And uh, so I had to go grocery shopping this morning and I had to clean stalls. Uh, we have four goats. Uh, you may or may not know that, but we have four goats, seven chickens and three dogs. So uh, stalls right now, since I'm working, only get done either Saturday or Sunday, depending on my work schedule. And I was too tired yesterday. I didn't, I got off at about 3.30. Um, and it was by, you know, with how early it gets light these days. By the time I got home, I was not feeling like cleaning stalls. So I got them done this morning after I went grocery shopping. And I've had a mimosa, so now I'm on mimosa number two. So I'm here to give you my top five things for making your route optimal and efficient. That is my goal every time I go out as a PVD. I am not here to uh, waste time and be on UPS's dime as far as trying to take advantage of it. That is not my goal. My goal is to be efficient and get as much done as quickly and accurately as I can. So my first thing to do is organize your vehicle by PAL sticker. The PAL sticker is a little four digit code that's on every box. Sometimes it's at an inconvenient spot for loading in your vehicle. So make sure you always have a Sharpie marker. I have a marker and a pen in my pocket of my shirt so I can, if you have to turn a box a certain way so it to fit right in the vehicle, you need to be, mark that PAL sticker on it so it faces out. That is worth gold as far as getting finding your packages quickly when you make your stop. Um, the next thing is to look ahead in your manifest. When you see your list, um, see what else is on your street. See if there's going to be, if you can park in one spot to do three houses like I got yesterday. Big thumbs up. So I could do two houses on one side of the street and one house on the other side of the street without having to restart my vehicle, which is a big deal in my book. Because um, you can do those three stops in a matter of a minute or two. So my goal is to always be optimal. Um, I think they say 10 packages per hour is minimum that they want you to do. I, I do 20 pieces per hour. That is my what I've done so far. I've started tracking how many packages they give me per day. And then sometimes my driver adds more to my manifest if for whatever reason she takes stuff off her load to give to me. I always add that on to what my manifest says when I first get it. And Saturday, yesterday, I had 110 pieces. The two previous days, each day was 130. And I got those 130 pieces done in six hours. So um, I'm averaging, you know, right around 20 pieces per hour. But that's because I look ahead to see where I'm at. I make sure they're where they need to be so I can find them quickly. And if I can make one stop and deliver two or three packages at different addresses in one stop, that's what I do. Um, the next thing I think is helpful to do is to always have your cell phone with you, especially if it's a signature required. Um, sometimes they're not home and if it's an apartment and it's on the third floor, I always want to call first. So not always is a phone number on the on the delivery label, but most of the time there is one, especially if it's a signature required. So I call ahead. 
as soon as I see that it's a signature required, and you'll see that in your manifest, there'll be a little pen with a person icon there, you know that's a signature required. So if it's an apartment or something that's going to take me, you know, a little bit to get to before I even leave, I call. Are you there? I'm bringing a signature required package. If they're there, awesome. I know it's good. If it's a residential area and it's a short driveway, then I, I bring my phone with me, but I don't call ahead because it's, you know, it's only 10 seconds to walk to the front door. But if they're not home, I will call them. And if I get them on the phone and they say it's okay to leave, then I don't know if this is okay or not, but that's what I do. Then I will, in where it says uh, get signature, I will type in okay to leave um, or verbal okay to leave, something like that, so that they know that I got the okay to leave the package. Most of the time, especially on Saturdays, people are home. So I had like five yesterday. I couldn't believe how many I had, but everybody was home, which was great. Um, but it's always helpful to be able to call. Or last week, I also had one where the numbers were transposed. It was like 8970 instead of 9870. And I was like, I can't find this address. So I called them and I said, hey, I'm looking for you. And it was a signature required package and they were home and they said, oh, it's this and not that. So again, always call your customer to find out if, if something doesn't seem right or if it's a signature required, it saves you a lot of time in the long run, especially in apartments. If you run a package up to the third floor and then you find out they're not home, it's like, ugh, <laughs> all that effort for nothing. Um, so that's a big deal. Another thing is always have a cart a pull cart and I've put that in other videos you can get them on Amazon you can get them at Home Depot or not Home Depot uh, Office Depot or Office Max whatever you have in your area a little pull cart is helpful for heavy boxes or super big bulky boxes or things like that um, the other day I had one on the third floor they always seem to be on the third floor of an apartment complex that I go to daily um, and it was on the third floor and it was big and it was heavy. So I wheeled it to the first floor and I left my cart there and then I just up, up I went. It didn't need a signature, so that was a good thing. I would not have done that if it needed a signature required and nobody was home. I would have left it in my vehicle. I might have run up to put the, the call tag on the door, but I wouldn't have had to hefted that package all the way up just to bring it all the way back down again. So again, those are reasons to always call ahead, signature required, and in, especially in an apartment complex. Um, another good thing versus for a car, apartment complexes is to snap a picture of the map. Almost every complex has a legend at the beginning when you first go in that shows the layout of the buildings. Snap a picture of that, keep it in your phone, I only have one apartment complex that I go, to. I have two, but one doesn't need it, but the one does. And I actually printed it out on an eight, you know, regular sheet of paper and I have it in my car. Now I've kind of got it because I've been there a bunch of times, but sometimes the buildings don't lay out like you think they should. And some of the buildings have two sides. Um, in this complex, so mostly there's eight units per her, uh, side but this two of the buildings have two sides so you don't know which is the high which is the low numbers so if you print out the map you can kind of see where you're at it saves you a lot of time um, from having to run around and try to find building numbers that sometimes are right in the way of the carport uh, roofs and it's like why didn't you put those numbers higher Another thing for apartments is, besides printing out a map, is lockers. Um, some of them have lockers. One complex I go, to, I go to, there's almost no lockers left by the time I get there. So it's almost a waste of time to try them than to just go to the apartments and, and just hand deliver. 
the other apartment complexes I go to on the other side, um, lockers are almost always available and it is so much better than running around to every apartment. Sometimes if this box is too big, it's not going to fit in the boxes and that's okay. But you know, if you've got eight deliveries to that apartment complex and only one doesn't fit, that saves you a lot of time. So use lockers when you can. Um, another thing is communicate with your driver, communicate with your hub. I have seen a lot of videos where people knock UPS or FedEx or whatever it is. I've only had experience with UPS, but my experience so far has been very good. I, every driver I've met between last year and this year has been super helpful, very nice. Um, they're so grateful for the help that they will help you with anything you need. Um, you just need to, to work well for them because you're essentially taking a lot off their plate by being a PVD. So you don't want to be lazy. You don't want to be inefficient. You want to work fast, but accurate. Don't exchange speed for accuracy because that doesn't work. But if you can be both, it's golden. Um, I've called in the hub when I'm done and, and I actually got from the hub manager saying, you are doing awesome. We don't, we don't need anything else for the day. You're, you know, he said I was killing it, which, you know, makes me feel good. And my, my driver says I'm, I am her PVD and nobody's taken me. <laughs> so that makes me feel good too. So always do a good job for your driver, communicate with them. She's always says, you know, if you have a question, call, make sure you call your driver. If there is a question about a certain delivery, they know everything about the route. So don't be afraid to ask. Same thing with the hub. If you make a mistake, if you're new, call them. Don't make the mistake and then call them. If you have a question, call them first. They'll help you through it. And then you'll learn. I mean, my first year, I had a few things that I messed up. I can't remember what they were now, but I called after I hit something on my little, uh, not it's not our dyad, but on the app, on the phone that they give me. We don't use our own device. We use a device that they give us. Um, so call them first and then you'll learn. And that's the only way. So um, I think those are my tips for being an efficient PVD. And, uh, you know, I've been enjoying it. So I have no complaints at all. It's very good money for the time that you spend. So uh, enjoy and don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you can ask me any questions you want. Please like, share, and subscribe. I never really say that in any video because it's just, you know, I'm not doing these videos to earn a living. I'm doing them just because I like to post videos about my Jeep when it's Jeep season, but right now it's PVD season. So, um, and it's Mimosa Sunday, which I am very much enjoying today. It was, a, I did six days this week. Every day was six hours. And, you know, for some that may not seem like much, but when you're doing 130 pieces and you're in and out of your Jeep, 80, 90 times a day, it's a lot. And I'm tired when I get home. So, um, but you know, I'm ready to go for tomorrow. And another thing, gas up your vehicle on Sunday. So you are ready to roll on Monday. Um, as a Jeep owner, my Jeep on these type of deals gets 12 and a half miles per gallon. So I pretty much go through almost a quarter of a tank every trip and that includes I it's 14 miles to where I meet my driver and then it can be depending on where I end up on my route it's anywhere from 10 10 or 12 miles home so you know I've got 26 28 miles a day that I'm just driving to and from included in that but my jeep gets 12 and a half miles to the gallon on these runs a little bit more going home but um, when you're stopping and starting and in and out of your Jeep that many times, that's what it takes. So 
Anyways, this is nearly 15 minutes longer than I thought it was going to be. So that's it. Peace out. And I will see you next week for a week three update.